ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Division Z Podcast. My name is Jason. And I'm Kay Cosmic. Today, we are joined by a guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Doug Dagnabbit, um, the guy who runs the Modern Warzone account you see on Twitter that people think is related to the real account, but it's not. I can't fix the game if you were thinking I could. Yeah, come Aww. on. Why can't you <laughs> fix the game? That's why we got game? you on. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. Might as well end the episode. Damn. We were going to tell you to fix your game today. Ah. Oh. Damn it, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I before we get into the first topics of the day, I just gotta say how funny that is with, with people like associating you with the like the official accounts, kind of a thing. I just it's the funniest thing ever. I love that it's kind of become a meme at this point. Yeah, it's always been funny to me. It was a meme from the beginning, but it wasn't nearly as widely adopted before I got verified, mm. and then. Now people don't know it's a meme, so it's like a whole inside joke on an account with <laughs> half a million followers. It's kind of weird. Hey, well, you know, it's one of those things. You have to be there. You have to be there, everybody. Well, uh, as I'm sure you're well aware, there's a lot of crazy things going on in the Call of Duty world, and I'm sure it's a lot to keep up with, and it's a lot to, you know, tweet about and also make videos about because, you know, he's also on YouTube, for those of you who don't know. He streams on Twitch as well. Um... But first things first, I guess starting at the beginning, what got you kind of interested in, in doing something like this, in this kind of gaming journalism-esque thing that you do here, and why specifically Call of Duty? It just happened. Um, it wasn't something that I was planning on. I had a pretty good job, and it just it just happened. And I noticed a chance to dive into something. Like, I've always liked video games a lot. My entire life, like I've been playing, I have my Game Boy Color in the background back here. You can see my original one yeah. when I was three years old. Um, I've always been a gamer, and just uh, the way that it happened is really strange and a long story. But it was pretty much that I I was on. I happened to be on the Reddit the day that um, the guy who they eventually tried to sue like leaked the cover art for Warzone, and nobody knew if it was real or not. But, uh, you know, we obviously thought it was. It didn't look fake. And um, it was a very low-quality picture and everything. You know, the typical leak that people say isn't real. And I wasn't yeah. into leaks or anything like that, but I was always on Reddit. I had to know everything about every video game I played. I just have always been like that. I like the min-max a lot. And um, I ended up on there finding out about that, and I was in the thread when it happened, saw the picture, saved the picture, tweeted the picture on my personal Twitter a long, long time ago. Um, and tagged a bunch of my friends in it and then i woke up the next day to a dmca email and the dmca email has to list the copyrighted content that you're copyright like infringing upon and it was uh it, the, the title was in bold print it was call of duty warzone and it said it was a standalone game and then i went to back to the subreddit and like made a big post about it and uh they weren't allowing you to talk about warzone on there really um because mm. you know it, it was a big leak yeah and um I made my own subreddit afterwards. I wanted to name it COD Warzone, but uh, that name was taken by the official subreddit now. Mm. And uh, I just sat there at my desk and tried a few different ones that didn't work. And then I was like, Modern Warzone. Let's try that. And then it worked. I think, I think I the name really sticks. a few weeks later. Nice. That's all yeah, in motion then. Yeah, the whole crazy thing about it is, is that it didn't start off with me having a source on the inside or anybody who like could tell me things that other people wouldn't know that would make people interested in me. And then that happened like three weeks after I had the subreddit. Wow. And we were all doing like data, like a bunch of data miners were interested in it. So I went through all of their stuff and compiled things and tried to figure out exactly when it was coming out. It was like a whole scavenger hunt for like two months. And um, the, then I got that guy who started giving me like actual reliable info. And then uh, I said that the embargo was going to be on the the ninth, so the day before Warzone was released, so 24 hours beforehand. Mm. And then when the clock struck midnight Eastern time that night, a fucking Twitch um, ad played the Warzone thing like way before it was really supposed to go live, and I was just like, "There we go," because nobody wow. believed me for a long, long time. Everybody thought I was just making it up. Wow, I mean, such a. It's, it's one of those stories where you just kind of go, wow, anything can really happen. Anything can happen. And, you know, you just kind of get thrust into those situations where, yeah, now now you're at the position to where you are now. And it's really awesome to see, man. I mean, it's honestly, you know, seeing seeing the page grow. I mean, I've been I've been following you for a long time now. I don't remember 
when I specifically started following, but it was definitely around the uh, like the war zone kind of time. But I mean, seeing seeing the growth and seeing all that is really great to see. And um, you know, I appreciate it's, that. It's great to have someone like you around in the community who you know it really really takes their job seriously and really really gets into the nitty gritty of things as well. Which is also why I also appreciate the. Uh, the YouTube videos and stuff where you go in and you go, go look at the classes and you go look at the updates and things like that. It's really cool to see. And I think that just shows that you can, you basically for anyone out there who's watching, you can do it too. I mean, yeah, facts. it's one of those things where it's not an overnight success per se, but it's one of those things where you're, you're there, your intention is there and you are, you're putting in the time and effort to do it and you can get to where you are pretty quickly. So, um, it's pretty great. Seven months. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's honestly for the online world, that's some pretty exponential growth too. Mm. I mean, I feel like all online growth is exponential once it happens in my opinion. Yeah, it's like a, like that's a fair. Snowball starts effect where just once it starts going, it just, Bam, that's like thing. that was my whole philosophy behind when I quit my job and why I did everything I did the way I did it is because in life you're gonna have these things that come and go and things that happen but sometimes there's gonna be a big wave and you either are gonna float right over it and it's gonna go under you and you're gonna move on and have to wait on the next one or you're gonna ride the wave until it crashes you just that's gotta a, stop the crash that's Eventually, a good one you can stop the there crash you if you ride the wave at the right time you can um you just gotta like I'm 26 years old, about to turn 27, and uh, most people in their life don't really figure out what they're gonna do until they're in their like mid 30s. Like mm. most people change what they're gonna do multiple times. So when you see an opportunity that you think will be good for yourself or your family, uh, don't be scared to try to ride the wave. Because I had to jump completely out of my comfort zone. I'd never made a YouTube video, never done any of this type of shit. So I just stepped out of my comfort zone, rode the wave, and I guess I. Took, I had a lot of missteps, that's for sure. But as long as you're genuine and you don't like lie to people and you don't, I feel like yeah. as long as you hold yourself to a moral standard and people can see that and you can concede when you, when you do things wrongly, I think that's very valuable. And also talking yeah. about yourself as a brand in the first person, people like that shit. Oh, a hundred percent. I think, I think with, with so many things online nowadays where, you know, they, the genuineness of a person can be put into question because of, you know, you don't know if they're going to be fake. And a lot of people online are completely fake and, yeah, and a lot of people, yeah, things, yeah, people really value the genuinity. I believe that's a word. Uh, they, they really that value is. that in a person. So, you know, also makes you stand out from the rest. Um, but you're also mentioning the, uh, you know, like leakers or rumor, um, people who do rumors and people who find things out like that when it comes to rumors and when it comes to things in that kind of vein, you know, you have like a kind of a vetting process as to, okay, this guy's sources aren't that great or this guy, you know, like how, how do you filter through all of that? Because I know there's a lot of fake news out there, right? Yeah. So, you know, what's, what, what kind of goes on in your head to kind of, you know, enlighten the audience and how you filter out all of this nonsense mm -hmm. and you try to report on the most accurate thing as possible. I think that it's also important to report on, report on inaccurate things and try to paint the picture of why you believe them to be inaccurate. I think no matter what you report on, if it's interesting information and something that people really like the game would like to like delve into and start thinking about themselves and theory crafting, I think that's like a beautiful thing to introduce to people. And um, I don't think that there's necessarily, I know a lot of people get upset about bad leaks or when like you share something from somebody that's not your source and you just say like, so-and-so said this, what do you guys think about that? Like sometimes people can get upset but mm. I've always tried to differentiate when I'm just conjecturing or when I actually have like somebody I very much so trust uh, giving me information that I know is from another trustworthy, like, you know, the source to the source. It's not, I'm third person. I'm not sixth person, you know, um, which is a very big deal. I, I also think that if you're trying to get involved in a business like that, that you need to take advice from other people who are also in that, that in that degree because uh, I asked for a lot of advice after I got a few things wrong by jumping. It's not so much that I got them wrong, but I overhyped them and they weren't as big of an event as I believed them to be. But uh, I would say what the most important thing to do is is to double verify. If you have something and you think that it's like like big, 
um, you can always like reach out to somebody who you know would know for sure. And um, mm -hmm. you can let them know, like, sure, they'll get the one up and know that you're going to report on this, but they usually won't do you dirty. Like, journalists have a code. I'm not exactly a journalist. I don't consider myself a journalist, to be honest. I okay. I write. I just write. I've always wrote, like, in high school and stuff. Um, I think that I'm kind of good at conveying a message. And I just try to make sure that none of, even if it's like a fake theory or something, um, that there's no filler involved in anything I talk about. I'm gonna tell you here. Here's where, how, when, and why. Here's where it came from. Do the, you can do the math yourself. Come to your own conclusion. But this is what I believe. I like that a lot. I really like what you said hmm. there because yeah, there's. I think with the level of false information out there, there is that level of yeah. Why why do people truly believe that? And why like where did that even come from? And how you how the audience kind of interprets leaks and how things like that of that nature happen. Um, but it's interesting that, you know, you say you don't consider yourself a journalist, whereas I think the majority of people out there, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, though, I think the majority of people out there would actually consider you a journalist hmm. because of the the work that you do. But I really like what you said about that, too, to be honest, because writing, you know, I've done some writing in my time, too, and it's, it's fun. I always, it's always fun to really learn the... Um, like kind of the mentality behind, you know, why why you do it and what's going on with that as well. So, um, yeah, I've been a lazy bastard lately. I haven't written an article in a long time. Maverick GG has mm. been covering the website for me pretty well. Um, he covers everything about anti cheat and all the other stuff. So, big shout out to him because he does a lot of deep research into things before he decides to talk about them. And I think that's important to have as well because I'm very reactionary and you need somebody to mellow me out. And at the same time, I just don't. I think that a problem with gaming journalism and content creation at all today is that you feel constant pressure to put something out every single day. Hmm. And then that takes away from your true focus and what you should really be thinking about. Cause if I, like I have my whiteboard over here, there's 25 video ideas on there. I could probably come up with 25 different ideas every day to write about with Warzone and something to do with it. But I want to make sure that the content that I bring is uh, valuable and not just always like yeah. conjecture ish and opinion based. Hundred percent, I totally kinda like agree. A, I kind of like a kind of quality over quantity sort of scenario. Like, not not so much. Why when you get a good story, you know it's a good story, but you'd rather put out something interesting and hold on a little than just put out something quite small and like minor. Yeah, like we have a little story yeah. coming out later that Mav's working on right now, um, and it's that Black Ops Three is more popular than Battlefield Twenty Forty Two on Xbox. That's no surprise. <laughs> Black Ops 3 is a good game. Battlefield. Uh, Battlefield 2042 <laughs> slid out of the top 50 this month. Wow. And, uh, I mean, Black there's, Ops there's... 3 is above it at number 47. Wow. There's even word that it's going to be going some sort of aspect free to play, isn't there? So that yeah, kind of shows about how. That. that was from yeah. Tom. And he said aspects. Mm. So I'd be very careful like how portals, people are thinking about that. Like the Portals might... game mode or something. Like yeah, that, they so. might open like Portals or something for free and then monetize the shit out of it with microtransactions. Just to get more people on, because the game doesn't look like it's doing too, too great. <laughs> to what I honest. tweeted, and I think people took it very harshly, um, mm -hmm. is that it doesn't matter if it's free if people who paid sixty dollars aren't playing it either. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's a good point. I think with the you know the huge free to play model as well, when it comes to you know a game like Warzone or having extra parts of the game be accessible for free, I think that does come with a level of you know. Uh, you know, it's it's free to play, but we also expect the uh, the quality to be there as well because all these studios have been, you know, renowned studios for years, and um, you know, with just the current state of Call of Duty right now is very up in the air. And I know this mm. might sound kind of like a blanketed question, but you know, what are your what what are kind of your thoughts on the state of what's happening right now? Because there is a lot happening right now. There's a lot of good on the horizon. Like that Microsoft thing, I was starting to get worried. Like I've never been worried about the future of Warzone because I've kind of known like the the plan behind it before it ever came out and what the original idea of it was before it took off the way it did. Mm. And they didn't, like everybody says that it shook the world and that they weren't expecting this, blah, blah, blah. Well, they had a five-year plan in place before it ever released. So I can't, I can't think that it's ever going to go anywhere. I still know it still pulls in great numbers. Everybody wonders why the Twitch exodus happened. 
and it's because uh nick Merckx no longer streams it to like fifty thousand people all the time and um tim the tab man went to youtube mm -hmm. those, mm. those two alone can change a viewer base by seventy thousand daily so, yeah that's pretty insane um yeah it's insanity but you have to think about things like that. Also, uh, Vanguard's in a bad state. Modern Warfare 2019 is hard to play right now. Um, Warzone's not in the best state either, but they did delay the season by two weeks, or True. by 11 days, I believe it was, something like that. But um, they did do that, and they straight up... I know they hate making statements like that. They hate coming out and saying anything like that. Yeah. But uh, after the Microsoft acquisition, I think it's time to get ready for a smooth transfer which is going to require all hands on deck to fixing the fires. 100%. And, and I think mm. that uh, it is going to get better faster now. And Raven's QA team, the 36 people who have announced the union and basically the entire QA department just announced the end to their strike. So um, wow. it's, uh, it's, it's trending back upwards. The question always is, is it too late? Cause it doesn't mm. matter. Like I was thinking about it while mm. I was driving today. Cause I think about games way too much these days, <laughs> just trying to think about what goes through like these companies heads and stuff. And, um, I was thinking about like, like games that are actually really good today, but weren't really good when they launched and like things that can just go immediately wrong. And then no matter what you do to fix it and make it better, it doesn't matter at a certain point. And, um, a, a game I was thinking about is, I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, outer space game where you go randomly no man's, generated. Sky? no man's sky yeah like that oh, game yeah. amazing game now i believe i hear at least Interesting. but completely yeah. not what the people expected at first and the descent mm. and the bad the bad pr around it uh just tainted it forever and that could happen very quickly especially with activision and what's going on with the lawsuits the fact that kotick's getting or bobby kotick's getting a um a golden parachute but he was always going to get a golden parachute he built the company from the ground up hmm. um it's just it's going back up the question is what can they do to make people happy again yeah and um they really need good pr around them i wish they'd let me help them sometimes um there's a <laughs> lot that could be done right now in a good way but i do believe now that um raven's qa team has ended their strike um, that's good microsoft acquired the company so now they have to do their due diligence at being bought at 95 dollars a share to uh fix the fires whether or not they own them or not yet i i'm, I'm not saying that it's like a soft takeover for microsoft right now mm -hmm. but if you're activision you need to honor whatever this verbal agreement and whatever you guys had written down in emails and all that before this this full contract goes through all the regulation because that would just be an even worse stain on activision if somehow this contract gets canceled at the very end Oh, a hundred percent. I really, I, yeah, I totally agree with what you said there about they need to, they need to honor what they were talking about with the deal and what, what they are kind of starting to preemptively put that plan in motion before it, it transfers over. And that would really show Microsoft that Activision is serious about, you know, well, doing yeah. X, Y, Z, whatever they're planning on doing behind the scenes and also fixing the fires and all of the uh, issues, you know, with the, with the game currently, well, games, uh, per, you know, currently. Mm. Um, you know, and with the, with the whole Microsoft acquisition, you know, you know, Cosmic, you and I were talking about this last week where I think this is going to be a, a good thing potentially for the future yeah. of Call of Duty. And, you know, at this point, at this point, it's, it's going to be a huge, we'll wait and see <laughs> kind of a battle, right? Yeah. Where you just kind of, you know, you, 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 you kind of hope for the there's future. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that Microsoft stands to gain from Activision's acquisition, and that's hmm. number one, uh, King. Nobody in the in our gaming sphere talks about King, the Candy Crush making company. And yeah. they made more money than Call of Duty in the last quarterly call. I have a that's new a quarterly point. call that's coming up in the next week I need to listen to for them. And EA has theirs on February 1st if you want to hear them get roasted about Battlefield because that one's going to be ugly. Ooh. Shareholders are pissed. That one's going to be ugly. Damn. Um, the Call of Duty one's not going to be pretty either, but now they get to put the Microsoft acquisition news on top of it, which makes it pretty. Um, but th those calls are very interesting, and they tell you a lot about what's going on with these companies. And King had made more money than Call of Duty and any the Call of Duty franchise, including Warzone Mobile, all of it made more more money than all of it, wow. it which all is insanity it. to me. I think so. I think I could be misquoted there, and it could just be Warzone, but I do believe it's the entire franchise. Um, 
and that's just insanity when you think about it. I mean, Excuse King me. has other games besides just Candy Crush, but yeah, that's where they Candy dominate. Crush is the main. Yeah, and, the main. And the, yeah, mobile games make more money than any other type of video game. Very they true. also are played by more people in the world, and they're more accessible than any other type of video game. Um, Activision stands to gain a lot from that. There was also hev heavy rumors of Warzone Mobile um, that I covered extensively when they first started, and I've still mm -hmm. tried to cover them to a degree, and Activision had recently said something in their last earnings call about another studio working on another Call of Duty mobile IP. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, boom, 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 there it is. They had to say something about it, but then they wow. got bought by Microsoft, so I don't know exactly what's going to happen with that. There's a lot that's up in the air, but Microsoft won that in so many more ways than just Call of Duty, and the Call of Duty exclusivity is all people are talking about. And I don't think it's going to go exclusive to xbox at all it makes no sense yeah, for them yeah, it no. probably feels better to them to make money off of things that are sold on a playstation console just sit there and hold the middle finger up to them you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i get what yeah. you're saying there didn't they also say earlier in the week too that they officially said yeah no this call of duty isn't going to be exclusive and uh yeah F they F said F that it'll stay on playstation consoles um due to and they will honor the contracts they currently have yeah so but it, it was like very well worded to where it could still go exclusive in the future. You're right. I mean, as, they as haven't a, made I, the official announcement that it's going to be on Game Pass. Like they haven't straight up said it, but it's a mm. first party studio. Every Microsoft on, owned first party studio is free on Game Pass on day one. That's always been the thing. That's why I've always paid for it. I get mm. Gears of War. I get Halo. I get everything day one. No worries. I can install it 48 hours early. Like it's a great service. And uh, that's going to be the big announcement for them is that it's coming exclusive to Game Pass. Is oh, for sure. every every previous Call of Duty for free, and they could even stop the sale of uh, Call of Duty those old Call of Duties on other platforms, or they could shut the servers down for it. Besides on Xbox and PC. I mean, now that's they, could, they control the cheater situation. They could do a Master Chief collection yeah. for Call of Duty. Oh, now that would be that would be fantastic. Uh, a, that would uh, just be a complete redemption for the older well, games. Yeah, what what would that be called? The uh, I don't know if they do the it, but Microsoft collection. is not, it doesn't give a fuck about spending money to better the gaming environment as a whole. And I'm not mm. trying to suck them off or anything, but they really do just blow money on their video game department. Like that is not where they make their revenue, and they just don't care. They're interested in the future to use their cloud based servers and all that stuff that really makes them money. Uh, mm -hmm. But when it comes to Xbox, that's why they're promoting cloud-based gaming so much. Like It's such an in-depth conversation. I've talked about it so much. But it is incredibly interesting to just think about what just fucking happened to what I yeah. do. And I'm very excited for it. And if I'm excited for it, I don't understand why any Call of Duty gamers would be upset, besides if they're on PlayStation and they're worried. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the future is heavily moving towards PC gaming. These new consoles, even though they're great and they are a massive improvement, like I'm talking, things are great for the $500 price tag. Um, I just feel the wave going to PC. I feel it hard. I feel it hard coming because I, I never kept up with all this type of news, but the whole NVIDIA is announcing new, much better graphics cards. Like every, I feel like another breakthrough is right around the corner and for it's sure. going to make it budget friendly for everyone. But this currently, hasn't happened yet because of the silicon deficiency and they can't right. they can't make the chips like they need to and once that is available again boys i'm telling you there's going to be a major shift and playstation's going to be left behind cuz they're not on pc no. that's a that's a really good point i mean with the also just how yeah just how powerful and how the how the gear has really evolved over the over the last few years with you know the the new hot thing for people to get is a uh, is a 30 series graphics card, you know, whether it's, you know, the different kinds of versions that they have there. Um, but even right here, <laughs> uh, well, there you go. They're pretty. There you go. Uh, so it's one of those things where I can definitely, I can definitely agree with you with the, the huge shift to PC gaming is going to be, is going to be a push after the, uh, you know, the silicon shortages. I mean, even with the, uh, I mean, cause a while back I needed to get a new graphics card and with the shortages, I mean, it was just so rough to, to find even, even a 20 series. Cause right now I have a 2060 is even so it's even hard to find some of those, and yeah. you know as, I mean, if, if they can get over the hump with that and i mean it's it's going to be really unstoppable for the pc world in in a mm. 
certain degree for CPUs that. have made a major jump recently as well. Like these two new PCs I have, man, the CPU is just it, it compared to a 3700 X, which was supposed to be overkill for what I used to need. It mm -hmm. just chug a lug to roll along, but these new ones, man, um, I don't understand how the hell it works or what the hell is going on and how they're making such incredible advancements with these cards. But both CPU and GPUs are great right now. They're extremely expensive at the moment. That is your issue. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can get a hold of one, I'm telling you, you're not going to need a new one for a long time. And even if they make all these other upgrades, where I'm pretty much right. Like, I don't know what the hell else I could want. My, my PC gives me 300 FPS in Warzone right now. Wow. 1440p. I don't wow. know what else I could want. I don't. I still have to go buy a monitor to keep up with it. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of power. That's definitely a lot of power mm. for. The thing is, the I future. think consoles are going to have to move to a new, a very new idea for them because they like yearly, re they like every releases all these the time regenerate hype around their brands, which mm -hmm. is smart. Um, but they're going to have to move to interchangeable parts. They're just going to have to. Yeah, and they're going to have to start sourcing their own parts, like making their own graphics drivers and stuff for their consoles specifically. Mm -hmm. and and making that interchangeable i really thought they were going to do that with the xbox series x they they talked about it a bit making it to where it's just oh. a tower that's why it looks like that you can just see. open it and interchange your your memory all that stuff and uh that's really like i'm not good with pcs and all that stuff but if you just gave me the one console and i just had to change out the graphics card once every four or five years i'm down 100 percent i would agree just game on console forever yeah. I am I love console. I came from console, brand new to PC, but they could mm. really do with that stride. And I think Microsoft wanting people to be on PC anyways is going to push it that way. Yeah, I'm I'm with you in that regard, you know, growing up on console and still yeah. fairly new to PC to some degree. Um, you know, it's one of those things yeah, where... Roller, baby. Hey, Ooh, look at that. You know it. I mean, I, 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 even keyboard and mouse is so difficult for me. I don't know how people keep up with it. But, uh, um, yeah, I, with the changing out the graphics cards every so often, I can totally get behind that too. Cause I'm not a huge PC guy either. Um, you know, I, I'd much rather be like, all right, I need you to tell me if this is good for what I need. Cause I don't understand uh, exactly. half, half of the technical mm. things. And it's like, it, it confuses me. It confuses me a lot. I don't know. It's I, am I old school? I'm only 22, but am I old school? I don't know. But, um, yeah, I I think the the prospect of consoles moving in that direction would be definitely beneficial for the gaming industry, which was actually a question I had thought of as you were talking about it. You know, what should consoles do? And you just kind of answered the question there. Um, which, I have a lot of thoughts yeah. for the gaming industry. <laughs> they should I, tap into my brain sometime. And I mean, I think I think people should should listen. I think people should listen because I I like those ideas. I really do like those ideas. I try um, to think, think of everything from both a... Not, I feel like there's too many elitists and gatekeepers out there for PCs right now. 100%. I try to think of everything from the perspective of a low-tier gamer to a high-tier gamer to somebody who lives to where they can only mobile games, all those things. I try to take all of that into perspective where people don't have good internet, all those different things, and then I try to form my opinion based on that. And I don't think pe people think that that means I just say what people want to hear but really i'm trying to say something that can be a potential solution for the majority over a minority and like recently i said that you should disable crossplay or consoles should be able to disable um crossplay to pc and only play like playstation to xbox i saw yeah. that and it caused a lot of heat but i'm sorry i just feel that way i i i feel I mean, that sense, way for it? the console gamers yeah and I know money wise, it would never, ever, ever happen. It would never happen. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't no. do it. They've opened the cross play can of worms. They're full on in invested in it now. But it does suck. Yeah. With the, the with the entire hacking problem too. It's that's that, that, why. Exactly. You know, people don't want to deal with that. And also, you know, because some people might be on PS4, because I, I play the majority of my things on PS4. So it's one of those things where I go, all right, well, I know if I come across a PC player in my Warzone lobbies or even just in a Vanguard or Modern Warfare lobby or whatever, I'm going to be at a slight disadvantage because of, you know, I'm sure you've heard of it. You know, everyone's heard of this, uh, 
the the FOV slider conversation and you know maybe the better better performances and things like that. Um I got more kills on when I played at AD FOV. Oh, well there you go. I just did it recently like on stream there to test go. it out and I performed better in the AD FOV games. It's all just different. People don't think all the pros and cons, they only think of the pros for each side. Mm. There's cons to both. I can't see shit. I have new glasses coming in. So at 80 FOV, I could see at mm. 120 FOV, you know, sure. If it's like a great picture and there's not different sh shadows and all types of cover around and somebody moves, of course I'll be able to spot them. But it, with all that, yeah, mm -mm, I can't see people. So mm. it depends on what type of gamer you are. That's if you a good, with that... your face straight up to a monitor, 120 FOV is going to be great for you all the time. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. I mean, with me, yeah, yeah. FOV in that is like it's it's good when you have it, but if I was stuck on a console, I wouldn't really mind. You get some people that are really bothered by it, but I'm I'm not. I'm bothered, bothered by the by the non-option to have it. Yeah, I think it should be there. Obviously, like it, it should just be on console no matter what. But actually playing it like FOV, AE FOV, it doesn't really. I play, I gamed my whole life until the past couple of years, even knowing that that was something that we could change. You know, yeah. like every single yeah. game was set to around the same FOV field. You didn't have any idea. You just played. Right. Like if you go back and play the old Halo games, I did that recently. Um, you you feel like you're in like a tunnel, like <laughs> the, the way the FOV is. But it just was mm. the way games were. So That's I don't for sure. really complain that much. And I, I've changed my FOV multiple times to like 100, 105, 110, 115, 120. The argument isn't so much that. I try to think of it at least. I know there's a lot of whining console players out there that would still be worse on 120 FOV than they would on 80. Mm -hmm. But I try to think of it as they, they're they're unhappy they don't have the option, but they are forced to play against people with the option who right. also have the advantage on them in every other category, including frame rate, uh, input-based monitor. I mean, they can use that type of stuff. But I think the biggest issue that nobody will ever agree with me on is that I'm allowed to use this on my PC. I think that's, that's interesting when things point. really get broken. I think that's a that's very interesting point because you yeah, get aim assist, don't... don't you, when you use a controller mm. on PC? Oh yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> you should. I, I... You still need to get aim assist, but the fact you get it at 120 FOV is what changes things. Because that zooms so everything out and it keeps you locked on to this little itty bitty spot. Whereas if you're at uh like the closer in FOVs, when you zoom in, the person's a lot closer. So the aim assist only kicks in for a second because they're like in your whole damn zoom field. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think with the whole thing with the um just the nitty gritties of, of how of how the game works too. I think it's kind of comical to me where um yes, I agree there should be FOV sliders there from the start and you should have the option to do it, but I just think people randomly commenting on official and you know, like sledgehammer or active or whatever, don't care at FOV L ratio like crap like that. It's like that's not going to help anybody. You know, it's like I think they've heard us. I think everybody's heard us that everyone wants FOV sliders, but you know what? Just don't even don't there's don't no even stopping there, the trolls, man. I know, they're, but I'm just saying there's no the there's no point in that. There's like no point in uh in commenting any of that. But um Let me get that fridge, bro. How much <laughs> <my fridge>? yeah. <laughs> uh fun story. I got it from a from a guy from France and I got it for like a hundred dollars. Hmm. When it was when it was worth like five hundred, he was like, I don't have any room. Do you want it? I said yes, and I didn't get scammed. So I got a Xbox sits. mini fridge back there. That looks clean though. Oh, I want the Xbox mini fridge. I, truth be told, I never use it as a mini fridge. It just I, I still there. haven't unboxed mine. I'm thinking about keeping it as like a collector's thing. Seal it. Seal. It. Don't don't touch it. Keep it. Keep it. Honestly, I if if I had that brand new, I oh, it was a fr it's, it's jug, so I I would have took it out. But that there, I would keep. Honestly, I would keep that and just keep it in the box. <laughs> Unless you do, want to take it out, then do I, I sense a trade? Yet. <laughs> no hell no. No, I like, I like I like I like I like my fridge, so I I we staying right there. This is more valuable anyways. It's like trading so, trading a Charizard for a Charmander. Come on, bro. It's just not worth it. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. I mean, you know, obviously since you see the Jargonog fridge back there, you know, we 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 basically started this podcast, you know, mainly talking about Call of Duty Zombies and, you know, that's where him and I got our starts and things like that and uh mm. it's almost obligatory to ask every guest that comes on the on the Division Z podcast, what is your favorite zombies map? Oh shit, this is going to make people angry. Ooh. Let's hear it. 
Ah, oh, you gotta you let me think bad. about. You gotta let me think about. It's gonna be a memory based choice, okay? No worries. Um, okay, so it's I'm gonna be the memories I'm, I'm gonna associated guess, with it. I'm gonna guess it. I'm gonna guess Black Ops Two is the game. No. Maybe. No. Oh, okay. Well, Black Ops One. It could be Black Ops Two. I don't know. I really do like Transit. If you were thinking about Transit, Transit was, was amazing Transit. times with the boys. I'm not. That's yeah. not the best. My favorite map though. Because I used to do high round runs for myself just because I wanted to be on a leaderboard when I was a kid. Like on World at yeah. War, mm -hmm. I did the uh, the tile based on the second story glitch. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like where you were like, it was by a grenade. So you could just repeatedly buy the grenade and the zombies could get oh, to yeah. you. And like the, the yep. world record was like round 400. I was trying to do that back then. Um, I really like that map. I really liked Kino, man. I really liked fucking Kino. I spent so much time in there. Classic. Uh, name some more maps for me. Just go through maps. I, uh, I really didn't like Shangri La's Easter egg because I I was super into Easter eggs back then and was doing mm -hmm. it with my friends. That mm -hmm. one was just way. That was when they started going really far with Easter eggs. Um, oh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. My favorite map of all time is Ascension. Oh, all fair, right. Fair, fair opinion. Fair enough. Not That's fair enough. Fair, I enjoyed Ascension running around map. on the on the lunar lander pad with a thunder gun. It wasn't that you know it was kind of boring if you look at it today, but. There's just mm -hmm. something invigorating about it at the time. I mm. think I think when you when it boils down to it at the end of the day is that it's just classic survival. You're testing your skills in a way that you know mm -hmm. Ascension isn't exactly going to be the hardest map when it comes to you know oh you got so many crazy bosses and crazy things thrown, being thrown at you. You just got to test your survival skills and you know eventually you know once in a while you just deal with the monkeys, but. Um, Ascension was great before the strats were figured out. I think that's what I liked about yeah. it. Ah. I also liked the discovery of the Easter egg on it. I also liked just the Easter egg in general. Shooting the rocket off was like the coolest thing ever in COD Zombies at the time. Um, yeah. But I people think that I'm, I sleep on zombies. It's not that I sleep on it. I just didn't like the general direction that they went with it after a while. I really also liked ah. Call of the Dead with uh, George Romero and all yeah. that. Like, mm. I really, that one was fun when it came out. I played all of them back then, but then they got to where they just, I feel like they went too hard. Like, I like Die Rise on Black Ops 2 as well. It was okay. But I also thought that it just took me out of that same immersion that the other maps put me in because I was jumping from building to building and doing this and doing see. that. Um, yeah, and a lot of people would agree with you that the jumping from building to building isn't exactly desirable. Um, I think the GOAT, <laughs> I really do believe that the GOAT has to be Darius. It has yes, to be. Absolutely. It just randomly at the end of a video game cycle added pack a punch. Yeah. And I was I was shook. I was like, holy shit, this just got really cool. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like we have like that one um I know that you guys like really like um not you guys, but the zombies community really likes custom maps. And I know that there was that new sure. Dare Reese remake recently that actually had oh, an yeah. Easter egg in Darius it. Right. Classified, yeah. That Easter egg was amazing. And there were good Easter eggs for Darius back then. That was like when I feel like the Easter eggs really started exploding. Uh, Shino Numa was okay, but it wasn't the best in my opinion. I wasn't really that interested in it. But I don't mm. remember all the maps from BO2. I do know BO BO3, I believe, is where I got thrown off from it. Uh, um, I did not they did enjoy Shadows of Evil as one map. Was it was it BO3 with Shadows of Evil? Yeah, Black yeah, Ops 3, Shadows of Evil, okay. you know, The Rise and Drac. I, I enjoyed like it that. after I learned it, you know, like with but my friends wouldn't play it because it took a lot of knowledge to like play that map properly. Um, mm -hmm. even if you weren't doing an Easter egg, it still was a strange map, like just to do normal things on. Like you gotta go to the theater, yeah. fight a mark what you like it was difficult to even make it to step two on that map. And I feel like that's why uh, Cold War Zombies did a better job with Easter eggs, even though I know a lot of people are upset that it doesn't take mm -hmm. three days and a bunch of people checking every pixel to find things. Yeah, I get um, what I you're saying. it's better for their overall health of zombies. Oh, And absolutely. I think they need to make the fucking standalone game, and it might happen. That, dude, we were just talking about that on the last episode. How this is the this mm. is the perfect opportunity for Microsoft to greenlight a standalone game for zombies. Yep. Because I mean, obviously, I mean, you also hit the nail on the head with the Cold War thing, making the Easter eggs a little bit easier for people. It, it kind of it, it kind of introduces more people to the zombies universe. As much as yeah. I love Black Ops Three, I think Black Ops Three Zombies is fantastic. You mm. know. I think it can put a lot of new players off as well. Like you, know, you have to, yeah, you like the map when you uh, learn it more, and learn you, you, know, you have to really take the time and sit you there have and to be, be like welcomed you know, into it at first. That's the I, thing. You have I to get be what welcomed. you're saying. It was the same issue with Bo4 with me. Like I tried their zombies, 
and I think it was like that uh, gladiator pit. I think it's called Chaos or something. Oh yeah, nine. Is that just Chaos name? Story, yeah. Nine, yeah, but nine. Yeah, and that just threw me off from the zombies on the rest of the game. Like really? I don't think it was bad, but it took it was involved. It was certainly involved. If you mm. were just trying to, I I really liked playing zombies with my buddies and just being like, okay, let's survive as long as we can. Mm -hmm. Like I know that sounds mm -hmm. lame these days, but that map was very much you better go do shit. You better go around. You better go to pack a punch. You better fight this boss, that boss. Mm -hmm. uh, sitting still started to get punished in zombies. I kind of feel like that's where they went wrong. Because on transit, my favorite thing to do with my buddies was just four stack, go to the city after we had everything maxed out, and then um, hole up in the vault. Like it was just fun oh, to just yeah, see how was, long you could yeah. last. Everybody's yelling, I'm reload, like all that type of stuff. <laughs> I've even noticed it on some of Noah J's uploads. His uh, most like viewed maps or the close quarters one where it's just fat shit insanity yeah all that's times. true and i don't think it had like zombies isn't doesn't have to be as complicated as they've made it lately and no. i think that i think at the at the core of zombies the essence of zombies is that survival aspect and mm. you know i can i can definitely understand what you're talking about with the super involved steps and it can be off-putting to a lot of people um and i think that's why over over kind of the I guess life cycle of even Black Ops Four, especially Cold War. Uh, some things, some things, not everything, but some things were kind of simplified, and but it was still involved at the same time. Where yeah, you know, I feel like a map like Togder Toten, the uh, final map for Black Ops Four, was it's a simple map because number one's a remake of Call of the Dead. I think a lot of people kind of already know the layout of that map and they know where they're going. But there's also some involved steps with that too, where you can have the Golden Pack Punch Machine, where it, you know, makes your it upgrades your weapon fully instead of just the first tier pack. You punch, guys are gonna have to like play that. some zombies and take me through i still need to do a couple easter eggs to like fill out my bucket list i got I'm you very much we got you in doing, i'm very much interested in doing all of them uh, i haven't done dare eyes and i haven't done Ooh. a tag i've never played tag uh basically what i'm telling you is after um which one did i say that put me off bo3 shadows, shadows of evil, shadows of evil. Yeah, that was pretty much where i exited that's where you and checked I out i didn't i didn't hop back in for another easter egg because it wasn't like they got easier after that <laughs> Oh no, the Easter no. eggs definitely didn't yeah, get easier way, after that. No, that's... I really want to do the Dear Eisendrock one because I know it's a difficult one. And I don't exactly want to be backpacked. I want to have to fucking carry my load in that. Hey, I got you, man. I you know, I think I think Cosmic Cosmic and I know that Easter egg like the back of our hand. We got you. Actually, I was almost um so I did the Easter egg races for uh, the Cold War maps on the first three, I believe. Oh nice. So I did I did Firebase C, I did I don't I don't forgot the name of the first map. Uh, D machine. Uh, D machine. Yeah, D machine. I did that one. We were pretty damn close on that one until we got um everybody crashed while we were getting oh. the dude in the vial. Um, yeah, we were ahead of doing them on that one. Um, and then I did Firebase C. That one was okay. Halfway through, fell apart again. Actually, what happened was our game um glitched on the part where you have to do the memories. Oh yeah. And you stick that, it in. Like we were we were us. in first place and nobody realized it. We were in ahead of everyone. Wow. We were we were on memory number three and we, we just that's where it ended. We got stuck there and after that the Easter egg's basically done. Yeah. We were right there. And um we were also super duper close to first. I will never forget this one. On the uh next on the last map. Not the last map, the one with Klaus. And uh, Mauer. Mauer or Toten. Yes, and we were so, bro, we were way ahead of the pace because I don't care, look, I don't believe in cheating or knowing early info about any of these Easter eggs and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into the conspiracies about people who do, okay? Uh -huh. I'm telling you anything oh, yeah. possible. What I'm going to tell you is, is that people in private matches were able to discover steps on some of these last two Easter eggs before they should have really happened and yep. discovered pieces that were supposed to, we were supposed to be looking for for them. It made it easier for us to figure out whether or not we were doing things wrong or correct. But on that last map, I remember somebody figured out how to blow that wall up with Klaus or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you didn't, um, like, you couldn't go through it yet. Like, that was where it was pretty much stopped. Uh... We were ahead on by 12 minutes at that segment of the world record of the first person. We were ahead wow. by a large margin. We got in there and just had no fucking idea what to do. Oh. Like it got very confused very quickly because we didn't know what it needed from us to blow up whatever that next part was. You had to put something in the generator, I believe. But um, mm -hmm. once we discovered what it was, it was just like God, it was right in our face. But man, that stuff is exhilarating, and I don't think that it's—I uh -huh. don't think that it's necessarily sad that it can all be done in a three-hour sitting or a two-hour sitting. 
Right. And that's but I what do I, not believe in people being able to find out steps early, even though I used it. Of course, I'm going to use it. Like, what the hell? It's not like I was given the entire Easter egg. That's pretty damn dirty if I were to do that. But oh, everybody had sure. the same ammunition I had, whether or not they went out and tweeted about it or not. But I tweeted about it. Like, I was trying to let people mm. know, like, yo, private match is ruining the Easter egg hunt again. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about Easter egg hunts, man. It's uh, especially in the zombies community, you have this kind of niche of people who will data mine everything and they'll data mine entire Easter eggs a lot of the time. If I'm not mistaken, it was um, I, th I think this really became a huge problem. I, I remember Moon, I believe, was data mined. And like there were other maps that I can't think of off the top of my head right now that were also data mined. But um. That's like a that's like a thing in the community where people go, "All oh, right, happens a new lot. map. Yeah. Let's try to let's try to get the whole Easter I got before it even comes out." And it's like, "I don't know about that one, guys." <laughs> Here here's the thing with that as well is like that they keep that's it hush the hush these days. It's not that they discover yeah. steps, they discover different triggers or they discover um they discover voice lines or whatever like the, the mm -hmm. thing talks about. I've never been sent steps. I've been people have told me like yo look out for this like the memory devices they were like there's this other device thing i thought it was gonna be like a gersh device type shit which i guess it kind of was but um it's not like uh I, look I, we should stop talking about this or i'm gonna say something that's bad <laughs> <laughs> hey hey no worries no worries um but, I, I was uh yeah. i was just gonna say what's it with uh what's even some of the like black ops 3 and uh black ops 4 one of the ways to kind of stop like not not like leak steps or anything, but like uh, story stuff is with the in-game cutscenes. Uh, that that's one of the big reasons they do them because obviously you can't leak an in-game cutscene because uh, it's all done in-game, obviously. But I remember of Infinite Warfare, and it was the second DLC map, Shaolin Shuffle. Uh, they did an update for the game, and it was that weird animated style that did it for. Like you know, mm. the, if, if you remember, Jace, I know you remember like that sort of cartoony right. like intro and outro stuff. So they did an update for the game, and it was two weeks before the new map was supposed to come out that the cutscene got found in the files, and it was all leaked out. So the map hadn't wow. had been out for two weeks, but then the cutscene was already out. Same thing happens all the time. Sometimes they uh, encrypt these things to where if you take that extra step to get it and you're found to be the person spreading it, you're pretty fucked. But uh, sometimes mm. those extra steps aren't taken. I've seen that happen with Warzone events. It happens with pretty much everything. Um, I've tried to tell them it just doesn't make sense, but at the same time, they also need to be able to implement small coding changes before they do a major one and make sure that the original smaller changes uh, don't break everything. So I understand both sides of that argument. It's just uh, kind of dumb. Uh, encrypting it is something they can afford to do on every level. Like, I, it is, ugh. especially about some of the skin bundles. The skin bundles get leaked months early. I do. I do remember seeing some yeah, of the uh, yeah. some of the skin bundles being leaked. And, Rambo. Uh, I mean, we've every yeah. single skin bundle has been leaked at least a month early. Yep. That that Attack on Titan one's been. Yeah, it's been out for like four months. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember. Um, I, I think we Scream I think was out for two one. months. Mm. Oh we really? About Scream for two months. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see that one actually. Hmm. We all knew about um, pretty much every big crossover they've ever had. The uh, oh man, I almost got in a lot of trouble for this, even though I didn't mean to. Uh, a rap group tweeted out something that was sent to them that was Jack Harlow, Drewski, and a bunch of other rappers like Lo or uh, Young Thug hmm. in that commercial for Verdance 1984. That was oh, yeah. the reveal that we were going back to Verdansk just in 1984, and that got leaked with none of the green screen effects put in and stuff. And I uh, like tweeted the video out. I had no idea what I tweeted before I tweeted it, and then I went uh, back and watched it, and I was like, "That's because <laughs> it looked like normal Warzone to me at first. I didn't yeah. realize it was the new map, but uh -huh. not Ural Mountains." And I was like, "Oh my god!" And then I had to do. I had so many emails immediately. It wasn't <laughs> on me. One of the rapper groups leaked it. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. What do you yeah. expect, bro? These are rappers, man. You think they give a fuck about an NDA? Yeah, you, 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 know. you gonna sue them? 
uh, man. I mean, it's, it's uh, leaks are wild. I guess long story short that you guys can take out of this one because, you know, there's just a lot of different aspects of what goes on in Call of Duty. But, um, yeah, man, I mean, we'll definitely – I'm definitely down to run some Easter eggs with you and uh, get, you, get you some of those completions and maybe do the, uh, the, the super – Easter egg, you know what I'm talking about, uh, Cosmic. With the you complete all the oh, Black yeah. Ops Three Easter eggs, and then literally the main the main thing that changes is you get to start the game with an RK5 instead of a MR6. So you get to have both of them, uh, and that's kind of like your mark of completion in Black Ops Three. We're like, yeah, you did everything, um, including mm. DLCs. No, not including yeah. the DLCs, but oh. the um, like the main core maps because you have when you complete the Easter eggs. I don't know if you remember this, but like there's those symbols at the bottom, not like bottom, but like on the images, the, like when you're selecting the maps. The there's like a from. yeah, the worms. If that rings I was any very bells. disassociated after. The, okay, I tried Shadows of Evil for maybe like six or seven hours total. Yeah, no worries. But yeah, they they basically introduced a thing where it's like you collect like those summoning too, parts. Right? Oh yeah, the gobble oh, yeah. jumps as well. Was, that was, it was another. Just too involved. That's exactly what it was. It was too involved, and I only played it as a as a casual game mode. And I think a lot of people do end up playing zombies as just a casual game mode, and that's where you know the kind of drastic change happened with Cold War, where Cold War, you know, despite what people in the zombies community might say, oh, it's too casual friendly, blah blah blah. I think it's a good balance. I think it's it a good, good balance. Thought it was very good. Um, one of my favorite games of, of all game. time. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was the bright point of the game. They didn't disappoint with their releases, but it took them a while to get the maps out, I guess. I don't know. People are just incredibly hungry. Maybe that sways my thought of how often they should be releasing hmm. new maps and stuff. Yeah, the zombies community is definitely rabidly hungry, I guess you could say, where it comes yeah. to um, any any little bit we can get our hands on. It's like the, it's like the biggest thing ever. I, I blame Chronicles for that. Interesting. It did do a lot for us, didn't it? And I think after that, we were kind of expecting. Did you guys get? It? You guys just got five of the best zombies maps of all time on a on a reworked engine all at once. <laughs> Don't be expecting that in the future. Sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, how can you recover yeah. from that? You know, there's not really, there's not really, um, there's not much more they can do unless they would do like a whole like pack of every map. But then it becomes like, oh, is that too much? Just is make a game. Much? Well, make yeah, a just make a game yeah. for zombies. Mm -hmm. Thing is, it would make so much sense as well because you can just update that game for the next like ten years. We just, that's what not... I'm saying. We just have to think of Microsoft now, fellas. Like they could yeah. really do yeah. this. They could really just say, "Here's every zombies map ever, and here's you can play on these three different engines." Very true. Very very true. And the potential yeah, is there because if yeah. since since Zombies Chronicles was the top selling DLC of 2017, I think people. I mean, I know that's kind of a Thing that people kind of hold on to a lot of the times when it comes to zombies where it's like but 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 you know we're the top selling dlc right? yeah it's like a whole game bro yeah you know, it's sold like that Just i know a game i know and i think yeah with people holding on to that when it comes to the zombies i think that's the the token of yeah do it do the zombies do do standalone zombies make make it so that i mean I guess you could. I just. Eh, how, 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 how do I say this? Open world zombies game, in my opinion, that's way yeah. different from Outbreak and all that. If they do it, yeah, that could so be an interesting a bunch idea. Of different survival based challenges on the different maps. You traverse the globe and go to them. Like, there's so much they could do, man. I would love to talk to them about like an MMO based around COD zombies, but it's like more like Fallout style. Dude, an MMO mm -hmm. based around Call of Duty zombies would be insane. I think it could. It, yeah, it could be the fallout of Call of Duty, the Skyrim of Call of Duty, the, you know, something like that. I think like Outbreak. from Tarkov, in my opinion. If you, if you go in and yeah. you die, you lose everything you take with you, but you have a home inventory, and you just get to go yeah. out into the open world. You, you could even look at it as in, like, let's say, let's say we had our base zombie game, right? And we had all of our survival maps. There could be different mm -hmm. sections of that game where you had, like, an open world section where you have to go out and do other sorts of things and then you could have your sort of like destiny raid style things where it's like quite a like kind of like a campaign mission and you're going towards kind of one direction like kind of like a left for dead and there's a boss fight at the end and you get rewarded there's so many things they could do in one game that all kind of correlates into like the same same story if you guys get what i mean mm -hmm. yeah kind of like the world war ii like i did play the world war ii zombies original map when it came back out and you fought the big zombie motherfucker oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, like kind of like him at it at the end of a raid type thing. There's, there's yeah. just yeah, you could do uh, that. It's, people would play the play. fuck out of that, man. 
Yeah, because it's different game modes. It's not to the extent of like gauntlets from Black Ops 4, which are just round based, but then with a different challenge each round that people didn't weren't super entertained by. But if you go full out on a, like a game mode like raids, where it's just a, a constant zombies coming your way, and you have your weapons, and like you can earn your certain weapon variants by playing more and more, kind of like Destiny, <laughs> kind of like a rip off of Destiny, but it was zombies, right? But it sounds Destiny's like Destiny's just a rip off of MMOs. Well, there you go, right? So like it it would work. Honestly, you, you progress to like this final part of the map. Some big boss guy, you and your team have to work together to kill it. And when you kill it, you have a chance of getting a reward, like a, like a special variant of a weapon or something. And that would drive players to go back and play it over and over and over again. And you could use that in like survival mode or the uh, open world mode. It, there's so many possibilities for the game mode. That Yeah, instead of like getting armor in game like we do right now. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. could just have a level three vest or a level five vest or a gold vest or a vest with a special healing effect. All, it's just, bro. It's all that. You can go down the yep. whole rabbit hole. I'd like, love it if they did things. something like that, but with like a Borderlands random loot system. Mm, ah. That would get real insanity. Especially yeah. because, you know, with the, I guess, out of game progression, you know, they've already proven they can do that with Cold War, with the Ethereum crystals, and you upgrade your perks and your weapon classes and things like that. So they've proven they can do something like that. And I like what you said about Escape from Tarkov and the system of, of that. I People love RPG great idea. elements and shooters, man. It's a we great just idea. Do. I love it too. I think I think zombies can honestly you if there is a proper skill tree in zombies as well, like Dying Light. Yeah, that would be great. I think. I think that really these beautiful. developers go wrong because they think of open world game and they just think of a massive world to do things. It's not so much that it's a world that feels populated with other people doing similar things to you, and you trying yeah. to be the best out of them all. It's not like like that's where Tom Clancy's Wildlands went wrong. Massive open world, absolutely nothing to do. I don't give a shit about clearing base after base, but like in a game like The Division Two, or The Division Period. Do you guys remember that game? A little do, bit. Yes. The Division, yeah. Tom Clancy's The Division, it was like a third person, but a, a, a shooter, uh, RPG, MMO type thing. You would do go run around the main area into, and you would go to a campaign or a mission, like a Destiny raid. You would get there, you would get a group of people, you would go in and do it, get your shit, come back out. But then for multiplayer and PvP, they had a different area you'd go in called the Dark Zone to where you could fight people your level or higher than your level or lower than your level, depending on where you went in there. And they could do the same type of thing with any type of open world Call of Duty, man. They're just, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Microsoft is going to tap this franchise like we haven't seen it been tapped. For sure. They got the money to take a loss if they have a failure. That's for sure. That's for sure. I mean, I Activision think this... did not. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a huge thing to keep in mind as well with, you know, now the funding is is definitely going to be there because I know a huge talking point in the and especially in the zombies community, right? Where, you know, with Black Ops 4 not receiving the proper treatment and not receiving the proper, you know, efforts and funds going into it as, you know, people would have liked to because of the whole, you know, blackout. They tried out blackout and then some of the zombies guys are moved over to there and then, you know, it, it, it was kind of a struggle for people to be like, ah, oh, you know, if they only did this, if they only had this much funding, if they only had this many resources with the Microsoft acquisition, I think you're 100% right about that, that they, yeah, they can just do it. They can just be like, hey, look, zombies game, go. Listen to me. If DayZ can get popular and still is as popular as it is, if you put DayZ in a COD engine, I'm just like, they... <laughs> I, I see so a lot much. happening. I hope these bastards hire me or something because I could pitch some ideas and make them even richer. These hey, ideas could all work. I mean, with all the ideas that you brought up in this uh, in this episode of the podcast, I mean, I think they should consider this your audition tape or your interview <laughs> tape. I mean, shoot. <laughs> I can't put these ideas into execution, but I can definitely come up with the brainstorming part. You can you Man. can tell them what to do and it would work sort of thing because, you know, you, you, you actually play the game. Right. You know, people hated just, Cold War and it worked, you know? Mm -hmm. Like casualizing yeah. the game always pisses people off. I think there's a very happy medium that can be reached for both Agreed. audiences to where mm -hmm. it's like hardcore, but it's also if you want to go in and be a dumbass and just be casual, you can. Mm -hmm. I haven't played enough DayZ because it seems a bit too hardcore, but I think there's a soft spot you could strike there. I feel, I feel like that. Rust is like the softcore version of an open world. Mm -hmm. But it also can be very hardcore at times. I don't yeah. know. I'm just conjecturing at this point. That's more just the the player base, though, isn't it? There's a lot of people that are really committed to it. I think so they like make it more hard. Yeah. 
Yeah, they make it hardcore. Rust itself is quite a simple concept. You spawn in, you have rock, you hit tree, you build house, you know? Uh, <laughs> and, you know, you go out and get supplies and all that. But then when you look at, like, some of the world building that people just do when they're in a server with each other, like, there's, like, like groups and all that. It's really, like, it shows what a community could do for a game. Everything's about a storyline in gaming. That's what I try to tell everyone. Yeah. Every tournament, yeah. every world record... Every big event, every drop is about the storyline of what led up to it, what occurs when the event happens, and what the post humor is is like about it. And I think that the biggest thing is to make sure you leave people walking out with a good taste in their mouth and not a bad taste in their mouth. Mm. Very well said. I think a lot of people currently would definitely say they have a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to Vanguard. And um, like we like we mentioned earlier in the uh, episode here, we were talking about, you know, people's perception of the game can be kind of tarnished. And then is it is it too little too late? Um, you know, for they for, should have banned in Vanguard Zombies, hundred P. They should have never oh, added dude. it. It's just a travesty. That's really just is. a whole other conversation. And, it, and if I this mean, is like if it's something that they're actually thinking about moving forward with, and I don't think it is. I really think this was like a oh here we go I let's mean, release I, this. I I see it as right zombie players. You know they're they're a decent size of like the card community. If we have something that'll get them to actually buy the game, right? And with the mm-hmm. trailer, the trailer made it look really good. Like obviously we knew that it, it was, was so be good. That first trailer was so good. Yeah yeah yeah. Right and the the artwork and the overall like aesthetics and just like the designs of everything like oh. This is going to be a really detailed world, and it's going to take this part of the story story and uh, take this part of like, the zombie story and give us a lot of detail. Like, it's a prequel to Cold War, and it's going to build on that story. But like, I, I don't, I, don't, I have no idea what's going on, and I'm a zombie player, right? Like, that's that's the main thing I go and play. But I've played Vanguard a total like five times, and I want to enjoy it. I'm not just hating it because you know, oh, it's so bad, it's so bad. I want to enjoy the game mode, and I want it to do well. But right. At this point, it's like. Well, if their studios and their dev teams for zombies are so small, then just let them work on one game in like a few years so it's actually decent, you know? Obviously, with Microsoft and that now, things can change. But it's like, I, because I, I don't see myself going back to Vanguard properly, even if there is round base. I think it's just so, it's too late, like we're saying, because it's a These yearly companies game. companies don't well. understand, or they do understand, but they weigh the risk versus reward of tarnishing their brand. And the consumer's yeah. overall opinion of them. And it happens quickly. Like I showed you, um, I have nothing against COD Zombies. People might think I do. And people might mm-hmm. think I have something against Battlefield. Like Battlefield, I played Battlefield 1942. I played, I've played them all. I enjoyed most of them. Um, but when you do what Battlefield did, like right now, that's almost death. Um, yeah. When you do the things that are currently happening in call of duty at a drop of a game. It, it certainly scares you, but cod cod literally can't die. I'm convinced it can't die. Um, you really have to think about what happens initially, like way more than you believe you do. Oh, way more. You can't just continue to pump out a product to it. But then the, at the same time, guys, like I'm into sports games too. Mm. And like NBA 2k and these other ones I'm into, they can, they could, they fuck their consumers every year and everybody buys the new one. So, like, once yeah. this model is abandoned by a few companies and they start, like, noticing that the community does better or that revenue isn't worth it as long as you gain more brand awareness, more brand recognition, more loyal-based consumers who will buy more than just your video game products, um, once we move towards that type of video game brand, I do believe that we will see much better products coming out. You'll never see another Cyberpunk 2022. Um, it's really up to the yeah. publishers to get on board. It's not the studio's. The studios have far been, every studio in gaming has been asking for changes to this for a long time. 100%. Because I think it was uh, was the last episode, we were also talking about how, you know, with this, especially with Microsoft and Call of Duty and in that kind of context, is they can have the, they can have the Call of Duty community um, in a really good spot with, you know, we were talking about the Game Pass earlier with having all the previous Call of Duty games on the Game Pass. And then, you know, you also add the newer games to it with their own battle passes. Yeah. So you think about it in this way. How much is Game Pass? Like 10 bucks, right? It was like 10, 10 bucks a yeah, month. 10, 10 bucks, but if you get Ultimate, it's 15 a month, which I okay. get and I get it on my PC and four Xboxes. <clears throat> so let's so think, thinking about that for just to put it into perspective, let's just say someone gets the $10 version of that a month, you know, that's $10. 
ten dollars a month plus the battle passes are ten dollars so let's say the new call of duty game comes out and you're paying for the battle pass you know in six months you're paying twenty dollar or yeah you're paying twenty dollars every month and then six months because or six times let me restart six months for your battle pass <laughs> subscription that totals up to sixty dollars at least six battle passes there's another sixty dollars they've already made 120 dollars off of you and then if you if you're a super call of duty fan and then you want to buy as many bundles as you can in the store. You know, I was saying I wouldn't doubt that the the store bundles from across all the games right now, Cold War, Modern Warfare, Vanguard, I guarantee you they're somewhere around the $2,000 to $3,000 mark. So if you're like a super fan and you want to buy as many skins as you can, let's say like half of that, you know, there's like another $1,000. So with this kind of new Call of Duty thing that's happening now they can have the opportunity to make some extra money and at the same time make the consumers happy at the same time and this just uh just seems like a really interesting situation you're right but you underestimate that number that number is much higher than three thousand dollars really I okay a lot of bundles it's much fair higher. enough it's much fair much enough higher. and it only gets higher and higher every single day that's they drop, fair they drop bundles more than they drop anything to be fair, it's the it's the easiest type of design, you know, not to discredit any art designers or texture designers, whatever. Well, for sure. Whatever you are out there that works on this type of uh, video game engineering. Um, but, man, I think it's up in like the eight to, to almost 10 grand range. I think it's getting there. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that definitely. might be a, a misleading stat. I do believe I looked at it a couple months ago and I was shocked. Uh, how um, just how high it was because I think I've spent over two thousand eight hundred dollars. Wow, uh, that that's a that's a PS5, a new Xbox, and a, a expensive monitor. That is that's a that's a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, I you do know. It for my content, but and well, to make I understand what's broken and what's not broken. It's a tax mm -hmm. write off for me, but yep. at the same time, um, man. There are whales out there. I mean, this is why Clash of Clans still exists. I used to love oh, that game. Oh, hundred percent, dude. But um, yeah, it, there microtransactions are the future wave. All video games are going to move to this free to play or subscription based model. Agreed. Xbox is going to suck this market dry, and uh, whether or not they commit to this current thing that they're pushing of uh, equality for all gamers and like they just want games to be more accessible. Eventually, the same thing. Is happening to uh, entertainment streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and all the others where they just continuously go up on price and they're okay to because people have moved away from cable for the most part now. Yeah. Um, the same thing is going to happen with video games. Physical physical buying is going to stop. Stores are going to die. And then all the streaming models are going to move to uh, higher, higher paid packages. It's going to suck when that happens. But that's a long way down the road. Oh. Right now, Game Pass yeah. is the only one that's really striking. And uh, they just bought one of the best things you could ever buy to bolster the Game Pass, in my opinion. Like every single Call of Duty game, first-party title. Moving forward, unless they completely change the way the Game Pass like deal is set up and the way they've advertised it, the way that people sign on, terms and services, um, all those games should be free. They won. Every single Call they of Duty. They really did. To level your guns in Warzone, if you own an Xbox, it's free. You can yeah. level them before before the new maps out of the Warzone every time for free. <clears throat> I could see that. People say that that won't push people to buy Xboxes, but I'm telling you, it's the number one selling game on PlayStation for a reason. Lots of people bought PlayStations just to play Call of Duty. Yep. I have a PlayStation just for the we extra weapon XP. Yep. Uh huh. When the you know with the back in the day, it's funny saying back in the day like it's a long time ago, but you know with the you know, when it used to be, you know, oh, yeah, get the new map pack first on Xbox 360. And then oh. it turned over to get the new map pack first on PS4. Right. I and never so people agreed really... with either of those. People think that I'm for Xbox doing it. No, fuck that. That should never happen. Destiny hmm. did the same thing with Sony to where PlayStation got free shit on there for an entire year. And right. Call of Duty has been doing it the past two years with the not the outbreak mode, but the multiplayer. Onslaught. Onslaught, which isn't amazing or anything, but Jesus Christ. Still there. A whole game mode content. for a yeah. game mm -hmm. that sells at the same price? Not yeah. okay. Not okay at all. Um, mm -hmm. So I hope Microsoft never moves towards doing that. My ultimate thing that I've been saying, and this is the last thing I'll speak <laughs> about with the Microsoft acquisition of Call of Duty, yeah. and probably anything to, to relate to these platforms, is 
is my I think that the grand takeaway from this for Microsoft with, with Call of Duty in mind is to play ball with Sony for now. And then they put an ultimatum on the table that Sony for to continue to have Call of Duty release on their platform, which brings them more revenue than any other game they have. Um, and they're also like a 30th of the size of Microsoft's market share, by the way, for everybody who oh, was wow. like, why couldn't, yeah, no, they're nowhere near close to the media, to the, to the money giant that Microsoft is. Microsoft is number two in the world in stock price. Um, Apple is the only one above them when it comes to like, how much their market cap is and how much money they actually are worth, like net worth. Wow. So nobody could buy them ever, ever. It couldn't, it would never go through any regulatory agency. That would be the biggest monopoly in the world. Um, and um, I, I was moving towards a point about PlayStation and I lost it. Oh yeah. Uh, here's, here's exactly yeah. what the final plan is. And I think the ultimatum for Microsoft moving forward for PlayStation is going to be, is they're going to let their contracts with Call of Duty ride out and any other platform they have with Activision Blizzard titles. And then they're going to say, okay, if you want these titles on your platform, which I'm, I'm, I really still think I sound crazy for saying this, but I think they'll say, if you want these platforms on, if you want these games on your platform, we're okay with that. But you have to allow Xbox Game Pass people on your platform. You have to be able to subscribe to Game Pass on PlayStation. Ooh. And I think that could be enough of a monetary hit to Sony and PlayStation to where they agree. Because right now they're working on their own model. But I'm going to be real. After this acquisition, I'm not paying for that. That's only single player games mainly. They they, re they literally put Spider-Man's IP and Wolverine's IP in a chokehold recently. They've shown they don't want to play fair. The consumer balance around them is mainly people who are extremely dedicated to PlayStation. And I could see that changing really quick when Microsoft plays ball for three years and then comes out with a story that the only reason Call of Duty is exclusive to Xbox is because PlayStation was not okay with making every game that they wanted to be cross-play between PC and Xbox. And number two, allowing Game Pass subscriptions specifically for certain Xbox titles, which would be the entire Call of Duty wow. series at a decreased price. I could definitely see that happening. And then they would just completely win the game based subscription model. When you put it when you put it into that kind of perspective, that that's does just an extremely sharky business perspective like, I'm trying to think of. It makes where sense. They could, gain, though. they could gain the public's approval and then they could go cutthroat and they could flip the narrative. Yeah. Wow. They don't yeah. lose. There's no there's no losing. There's from no it. loss there. They they're they're okay to take the hit from losing sales on PlayStation after four years. What is this gonna be like two or three more years till they potentially even think to do that. Sony refuses to um, expose it to the public what their actual contract length is, but Microsoft knows. Microsoft has to know. It's a part of the acquisition. So we'll see. Wow, that's that's an idea. That's uh, that's what I would do. That's pretty. That's I'd put it makes them in sense. A rock in a hard place, and I'd make sure every Call of Duty that comes out before then is amazing. Modern That's... Warfare 2, we're moving to Black Ops Cold War 2. They're not going to title it that. I don't know what they're titling it. It's rumored to be basically Black Ops 2. Mm. Yeah, because I, I think a, yeah, Black Ops 2 very, kind very, of a very setting. Thing. You have to follow up Modern Warfare 2 with something amazing. And that's exactly what happened back in the day. Yep. I think it was mm. Black Ops 1 that followed Modern Warfare 2. Yes, it was. Had, yeah. And then you had Modern Warfare 3 and then Black Ops 2. Like this... You have to have the hits in a row. You can't space it out. Public opinion is uh -huh. very important. Yeah. Mm hmm. And that's what's going to be key. That's what's going to be key for people. That's why I tried to tell people earlier this year and they called me crazy. I said, Call of Duty's moving towards a new golden era. I said that specifically, not with just Vanguard in mind, but with the fact that they're moving towards companies that they normally don't make use Modern Warfare 19 engine, move to that. Once they all have adopted it and they fully understand how to work inside of that engine, oh man. Oh man, the the sky is the absolute limit for Call of Duty moving forward. It's basically the same thing that happened back then. They found a winning formula, and mm -hmm. then they stuck with it. And the next four games they released after COD Four all stuck with the basic formula of COD Four. People really like kill streaks. People like mm -hmm. guns that kill fast. People also really like modern times. Bada bing, yeah. bada boom. There you go. It's one of those things where you know. History history can repeat itself with, you know, the 
the different improvements and the different things that you can add to a game franchise and just the patterns that you notice too. You know, I think it was, you know, back in back when the kind of Sony deal was happening with Activision and Call of Duty where you had the next game up was Black Ops 3 was the first game to be in that kind of thing. And, you know, Black Ops 3 is a great game and people really, in my opinion, I think now more than ever kind of appreciate Black Ops 3 and kind of look back on that fondly. But I think, you know, when you have something like this and the next Treyarch game is going to be the first like real game on this Microsoft acquisition that's going to be coming out under that, I think, I don't know, to me it just looks like it's lining up for history to kind of repeat itself where the next Treyarch game is going to be really good like it has the potential to be really good in in that kind of way so yeah microsoft what also could notice. just like cod said that modern warfare 2019 was a soft reboot right and we've seen so many ties to the old saga like menendez and black ops cold war like there's heavy yep. hints to menendez that i never saw expanded upon um there's all types of different things that tie into the old storylines and microsoft could just come in and straight up be like yo Fuck the soft reboot. We're going hard reboot. We're redoing all of your favorite games with your favorite campaign storylines. And then we're going to expand upon those and finish them like we never did before. Like, there, it's just like the, the, the roofs are <laughs> wide open. And nobody would be as sad about that, in my opinion. I wouldn't be sad no. about that. Who Knowing would be? The quality they put into their games. Right now, I do not want a Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer remastered done by Activision. Under Microsoft ownership, I'm down. I'm down that's, for that. That's fair. I would agree with that. Um, you know, with the with the whole hard reboot of of the franchise and the, all that, I think so many people would be on board with that. So so many people. Mm. I think that's where you could really get a huge player base come back to buy Call of Duty for the campaign now, because you know all those classic campaigns from the original Modern Warfare and the original Black Ops games. So many, it's beloved. I mean, Black Ops Two is my favorite campaign. And, you know, you know how many people would go crazy, just ballistic yeah. about something like that? I mean, it would be insane. So not only would you be, you know, improving the game on the multiplayer, zombies, Warzone front, then you can bring back players who like story. And then that'll really yeah. increase everything. So, so a little, little uh, podcast. I always give, like, every podcast to go on just a little exclusive look into some of the things I hear about. So this isn't from any of my sources and this isn't like verifiable. This could be absolute BS. Okay. But I have heard whispers from a few different areas of um no Russian being redone for this coming one in its own way. Really? Kind Interesting. Of. I'm just saying Modern Warfare shook the internet using chemical warfare again. Whether people realized it or not, a lot of people were against the white phosphorus use in the campaign. Yeah. Um, I do and remember Modern that. Warfare also shook the world because it was so realistic. Like the events that happened within the U.S. Embassy, you basically li relived the uh, movie that was made about going into Osama bin Laden's cave and assassinating yep. him in that one mission on Modern Warfare. Um, stuff like that, while it can seem like it's negative PR-wise, um, there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with depicting very serious situations that could potentially happen in the, the time setting you're creating a rated M video game in. Right. In my opinion. And that's what I made uh, Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 stick out to me back then. Like an EMP and the battle for the White House happening. Like that was just at home fighting in America. That was like what really drove the series home for so many people. For and sure. uh, I just think it's worth the online backlash to revisit something as iconic as a no Russian to be real. They probably wouldn't 100%. have any children in it or extreme, extreme warnings before you play it. But I have heard whispers about that and people talking that that's a thing. Wow. I, I mean, that's just a part of the reasons yeah. why I get, I hear a lot of things about the sub cup in call of duty and it make me very happy. Wow. That's, um, that's interesting. That's a very, very interesting thing to hear about because of how polarizing no Russian has become or already when it came out it was already so controversial you have to be um, careful about the races like it would be extremely controversial right now due to what's going on in right. Iraq and ukraine right um, you really do have to be careful i don't know i i don't think it could be done the exact same way as no russian but i think it could be equally as violent and choose a way to paint it better without causing world war three in real life that's so, a good point. See what happens <laughs> with it. Point. Also, the current rumors about that game that have been publicized by VGC are about cartels and um, 
South America primarily. So it's a whole different scenario if it happens in that type of airport versus a Russian mm. international airport. Very interesting. Very, very interesting stuff indeed. Wow. I mean, especially because if, if you know, so since we have Modern Warfare 2, presumably called Modern Warfare 2 coming out, a mission like No Russian, the No Russian-esque thing, I think would get a lot of nostalgic people to come back to the game as well, even though that sounds kind of terrible. I'm nostalgic for No Russian. and it, 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 Out of context and from a different point of view, that would sound terrible. But yeah. like, you know. In context, it makes sense. It was just yeah. something you had to live in. Yeah. Something you were not prepared for, but something that I think should be exposed to more people is what really happens during a terrorist attack. True. There is no running. Yeah, you, especially you since you, you know, with the campaigns, and I think that with the whole argument with, you know, oh, Call of Duty needs to be more realistic, right, with the World War II stuff. Oh, that's not realistic, blah, blah, blah. I think where you can really inject your realistic things into a game is your campaign. That's mm -hmm. what it is. You yeah, know, yeah. multiplayer. Well. There's a lot of racist undertones in the Vanguard campaign. Mm -hmm. And they did that for a reason. I have no problem with these, with companies using uh, campaigns or anything to ex ex exhibit what it was really like to be in the setting that they're trying to depict. I think it only adds to immersion and that um, I, I think it'll be encouraged more and more. If it was really that big of a deal, GTA 5 would still not exist. You can do things oh, yeah. in there that are way too realistic to real life. All yeah. the time, but I digress. That's that's probably it. That's probably the last thing I have to say about the whole Call of Duty thing. Hey, that's fair. That's fair, man. But um, hey, this was fun having you on the show. I gotta say, absolutely. Um, this was a very insightful uh, conversation, just about you know who you are, what you do, and then just your thoughts and opinions. And that's one of the things we love about this podcast is we love getting people on and just hearing every single kind of opinion, every single kind of angle. And, you know, especially we haven't quite had a guest on quite like you yet where we had, where you're super involved in the news and you're super, super mm -hmm. involved in that kind of side of things as well. So, um, really insightful and i want to say also thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule for yeah, so coming good, on man. as well i mean i know we've been trying to get you on for a few weeks now and yes, uh sir. you know i like i really appreciate you coming on happy to make it happen man i enjoyed my time here as well for sure um sometimes it's hard doing the type of thing that we do uh you can't really talk to your in real life friends about it because they aren't kept up as kept up as much as it with you so i i do enjoy doing podcasts and uh, talking to people that i know value the type of things that i like to think about on a daily basis i wish i could just shut my mind off whenever i leave my office hmm. and decide to go home to my kids and my wife and stuff but um i'm constantly trying to understand this industry and the way that these companies work because yeah. i thought that i got it to a degree and then i saw a 70 billion dollar acquisition happen on my timeline yeah, that made you uh, rethink a little. It just made me rethink, like, what is real money value? And it's it, there's so mm -hmm. much I'm going to talk about by the time I'm done with all this. But I don't think that any gaming company who truly cares about uh, making it big in the long run needs to focus on the next five to ten years. They need to focus on after that. Things are changing. Sure. Things are changing rapidly, very quickly. Metaverse is a very real thing that could become popular, uh, whether we want to meme it or not. Everything is going in all types of crazy directions. That's for and sure. uh, I think the most important thing right now before the next technological leap in gaming happens is to make sure that your brand is a loyal brand and that you have followers and that you have a genuine following that understands that you are genuine and that you are trying to do what's best for the community in involved. And I think that Microsoft just hit it out of the park and I think they'll continue to hit it out of the park. I agree, man. And some wise words to, uh, to kind of, wrap things up here pretty quickly here um but i guess without uh without further ado do you have any other closing thoughts do you have any other final things you'd like to say um you know when are you going to fix your game you know is there anything yeah. you want to say you know <laughs> i got you um number one stop disrespecting zombies don't put out a bullshit product if you don't believe in it and you're not going to properly support it and you're just throwing it on as a third game mode People are still going to buy your, your title every year because they need to level up their guns for Warzone. Number two, <laughs> Warzone's broken as shit right now. Please fix the game. Um, number three, Modern Warfare 2019 is broken. Uh, people who spent their hard-earned money on it this past Christmas have been sending me emails like crazy 
that they, it's ridiculous they can't play a game they still spent sixty dollars on number four is reduce the price of all former call of duties before microsoft microsoft takes over i'm trying to go back through and play all of the games and i think for me to buy them all i'm gonna have to spend about four hundred dollars and uh yeah. it's kind of ridiculous yeah. it's kind of ridiculous that i have to do that Very. Uh, number number five is um call of duty if you ever if any developer hears this turn back into something that's focused on your community it's the reason you got to the size you did you made games that pleased your community um specifically after you blew up on youtube with the sniping montages and things from from content creators such as optic you created black ops 2 with sniping in mind you created the rank playlist with everything else in mind thank you to vonderhaar for that but vonderhaar you've sucked lately um you've turned into this very thing you never wanted to be um but definitely call of duty show some love to your people i don't really want to shout myself out i just want to talk about the game i want the best for the game wow some great closing thoughts there man those were, that was great how about you cosmic you got any closing thoughts uh just thank you for coming on man it's been a, a great episode of the podcast i'm glad we got got to do something a bit different because normally we have like zombies people on so to mm -hmm. kind of dive more into like the news side of things it was really interesting and honestly i hope we have you get on again in the future 100%. Oh, for sure we got to get the zombies game in sometime oh, i absolutely. live stream all the time so i'd love to do it on stream with y'all that's 100 percent. probably uh, i might even see if you guys are down to incorporate it with my playthrough of the old call of duty games because i'm starting on campaign on cod 4 so i could beat the campaign and then make it to where every time i beat the campaign i have to beat the zombies easter eggs on that game before i move to the next one ah well there we go and i would be down I'd be, be down totally as well. down to do that, man. That sounds Absolutely. like a ton of fun. But uh, cool, dude. there we go, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching episode 78 of the Division Z podcast. What was your favorite part? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. And with that said, have a fantastic rest of your day or night, depending on where you are in this crazy world. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye, everyone.